Welcome, Welcome to the Powerful One Podcast with your host, Tommy Parker. This college dropout turned entrepreneur and high performance coach created Powerful One, One with the mission of sharing the stories of individuals who have divided from conformity and redefined success in their own terms. Join us as we dive into the incredible stories and journeys of becoming truly powerful. Welcome to the Powerful One Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Tommy Parker, and today I am joined by Nasia Backus. But before we get into the episode with Nasia Backus of the Powerful One Podcast, I just wanted to remind you guys about the Powered Up Party that is going down Friday, March 26th at 5.15 p.m. It is two weeks from today. We are going to have a special guest. We're going to have a seven-figure entrepreneur to answer questions, to share ideas, to share tips, tricks in the entrepreneurial world. We're going to have some prize giveaways. We're going to have a fun time for Q&As, a fun time to be able to share ideas, collaborate, grow your network. So it's going to be an incredible party, guys. We've got about eight spots left. So click the link, the first link in the bio in the show notes to register for the Powered Up Party on March 26th, Friday at 5.15 p.m. And without further ado, let's get into the podcast with Naz Backus. Naz is a 23-year young owner and operator of the Talk Back podcast. And after graduating college at the height of the pandemic, Naz was faced with a new reality, given that the potential job search and career search was uncertain for her. After encountering a near life and death hospitalization, Naz had a deep look at her life and had truly been wondering if she was living in an impactful way. She quickly understood that there was more to life than running from one thing to the next, so she created the Talk Back podcast. Going from a girl who was very shy and by the book, Naz started her podcast to encourage people to fearlessly embrace themselves and to remember how lucky we all are despite what the world may look like. Now she is talking back to societal norms and expectations to help people step powerfully into who they truly are and want to be. And in today's episode, we talk about Naz's podcast, Talk Back. We talk about her crazy hospitalization encounter that forced her to wake up and take control of her life, using your gifts and love to serve others, shifting your identity. We talk about finding your voice and taking action, living for the kid inside of you, talking back to societal norms and expectations, getting around the right people in life. We also talk about journaling and how to begin, talk about healthy habits and really what's next for her in her journey. So here it is, guys, episode 44 with Naz Backus. All right, Powerful One Podcast. What is up, everybody? We are here with the lovely Naz Back, and she took time out of her day to come on the Powerful One Podcast and share her power share her story with the world because we are a worldwide podcast. If you didn't know, go subscribe on YouTube, go subscribe on Apple music and make sure you write us a review because we are a worldwide podcast. But anyway, nonetheless, NASDAQ, how are you? I'm good, Tommy. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for being on the show. So excited. Um, we have mutual, we're mutual podcasters. Um, we actually, I just did your podcast. So not sure on the release date for either of those, but I was honored to be able to be on your podcast and quick backstory. We met not too long ago from a mutual friend, shout out Adam Shibley, cause I know he's <laughs> listening, but we met from a mutual friend not too long ago and we got connected and it was so crazy cause we actually live in the same state. We both live in Maryland. We're both 23 and we are both you know, trying to divide from conformity, trying to spread positive vibes, not germs. Shout out to the Talk Back <laughs> podcast. But you no, know, it's just so cool being able to connect with somebody who's, you know, like mindsetted, who's a similar age to me. So, you know, it's just really cool to be connected. Um, but yeah, so tell me a little bit about your podcasting journey and getting started with the Talk Back podcast and where the evolution came from to where you are now. I'm so curious about everything. Yeah, man. So well, podcast is pretty new still. So I'm the host of Talk Back and um, I started it in October of 2020. So, you know, the height of the pandemic, everyone's still freaking out and, and all of that. But um, I started the podcast because it is time that we talk back, at least for me, which is why I had to start up on the platform. And we're talking back to societal norms, things that make life hard, but then we're just kind of like rewire and think like, why does life have to be this hard? Like who is telling us this way? 
And it really does align a lot with Powerful One. So I'm so excited that we got connected. Yeah. And I want you to talk a little bit more about the overall message of Talk Back and just like the the direction, how aligned they are. But, you know, talk a little bit more about what are some of the stuff you want to talk back against, what specifically you've talked back against in the podcast. And then we'll get into kind of your podcasting journey and how you, you know, why you wanted to start the podcast. I mean, you really did come into it at a great time, being that it was the pandemic, people are looking for, you know, a different alternative to some stimulus. It's not outdoors, not with people. So yeah, if you don't mind, just talk a little bit about that. Um, just a little bit more extensive about what you're trying to really bring to talk back and as it, you know, relates to powerful one as well. And then also just, you know, getting started in that journey. Okay. So I think we'll start with the journey and, and why, why did I pick up the mic? So the, I guess the quote unquote sob story, which is actually one of the greatest stories is in September of 2020. So a month before I started it, I just had this crazy like hospitalization. It wasn't from COVID if anyone's asking, <laughs> but um, it, it was like this weird, like migraine head pain thing that I had. And like, I couldn't move my neck. I couldn't, I could like barely walk. Like it was really scary. And it just came out of nowhere. And I'm like in and out of the hospital for a week. And the best thing that's making me feel good is like morphine getting pumped into me every so often. And it's, it was so scary because like at the time I'm 22, it was only last year. And, and I remember like being in the hospital, like, okay, what actually did I do from this moment? Like if it was lights out, like it, it was that bad that I'm like thinking that big reflective thing. So if it was lights out for me right now, what did I do? What did I offer the world? Who did I, who did I help? And then you really kind of think of like the legacy that you want to leave behind. And I didn't do anything wrong per se. Like I followed the school system. I just graduated college in May of 2019 and, and I felt good, but then when you think like, if that's it for your life, you're like, but that's all I did. I like, I filled my head up with all this knowledge. I didn't even get to apply yet. But the main thing that was like kicking me in the stomach was like, I, I didn't help anyone. Like, what did I do? I just, I just didn't feel like I helped enough and crazy. Like after um, that whole thing. And like, it took like a month of recovery. Cause I even had to get like a little surgery done. And like, I was rocking like a Skrillex look on the side of my head for a little bit, but you know, I thought it was cool. I'm just kind of owning it. And um, I got into like volunteering more and it just, this like crazy thing that, that happened to me was almost one of the best things that happened to me because I feel like it just aligned me with what I knew I wanted to do. So in the pandemic, like how much you want to see people and help them, but then you're like, okay, we're out of quarantine or whatever you got to do. So podcasting really allows me to connect with a lot of great people link with you, Tommy. Like, it's just, it's so cool. Like the platform and what it can do. And, um, so I picked it up and that's how I started talk back. And I was like, I'm going to do this for me uh, because it's what I want to do, but it's for people. Like, I think that's how like the world goes round is like when you're doing something for others and you serve them, it's, it's not just like a solo, solo thing. So I'm just hoping that people kind of, um, they, they enjoy it. I think I'm funny sometimes. I don't know, Tom, you tell me. <laughs> no. Yeah. You, you have a really great, I mean, guy, if, if you ever listen to this and you're not familiar with her, with Naz's podcast, go listen to it. Cause talk back. She brings a lot of good energy. She's a really good podcast host and she, she does have a very funny, witty sense of humor personality. So it's, it's really an awesome platform that you've created. And, you know, when I first kind of heard about it and heard about you, I was like, Whoa, she's only been doing this five months. And so what I want to just track back real quick to, to you really like having that deep inflection point. I think when I look at the parallels between my story and your story, the real key of, of waking up, so to speak, is this kind of deep inflection point where you realize like, wow, I've been living a life that, you know, while it may have been good, is not really a life that's been fulfilling and there's no impact and there's something missing essentially. And so I want you to talk a little bit more about how, you know, that experience led to the podcasting and why you really chose podcasting and, and how to like find that for somebody. So for people who have this deep inflection point, who, who know they want something else in life, like what did that look like for you in terms of being able to pick up the mic and know that this was a direction that you wanted to go in? Dude, it's funny. Like the way I think about it, I'm like, I'm in the hospital room and the grim reaper is like handing me a mic. It was like, you, this is it. It's, and like, that's, I don't mean to freak people out by it, but it's like at one point in your life, like you almost have to get scared or like shoved into doing the thing that's going to make you really happy. And, and I always loved radio. Like since like middle school, I'd listen to 99.5 with the Kane show. And they have these cool segments of like war in the roses and all of this. So I, it's funny because when I really got into it, I was like, I actually liked radio and, and the whole like 
platform um, before like podcasting was really a thing. So, and I've been planning to do the podcast for like since college, but I just never, like I never did it. And, and it took like this, this whole shift of being like, well, if I was going to tap out now, like what, it, like just what happens? Cause the thing, like, you don't have to look at like death almost as like a bad thing, but if you really think your life is going to end and like, and if you really just take that in the forefront, it's going to gauge like how you're going to make your next steps and they'll make it, it'll be that much more impactful for yourself and for the people around you. Um, so it's always just having like the bigger picture and like the end, the end in mind, but um, to use it for like positive stuff. I, I really like that. And, and, you know, I see it all the time. If you're somebody who's very afraid of death and you're somebody who doesn't really think about death, it's probably because you've never truly lived. And I say that with all respect and all sincerity, but knowing the fact and knowing that, you know, the truth is 99% of people will be asleep their whole life. They might be alive, but they're not actually living or they might be living, but they're not actually alive, right? Like there's, they're just kind of going through the motions of the day to day. So I think to have that, that kind of you know, face to face with the Grim Reaper experience, it really puts into perspective, like, wow, I can die at any moment. It's not morbid. It's reality. We are we are mortal beings, right? We have an end point and we have a beginning point and we don't know when that is. So to be able to think about death as a motivator, I think is something that, you know, as we talk about some of the stuff in, in conformity that we want to change, that's something that I want to change. I want to look at a calendar every day that shows how many days I have left to live, ideally. And that could be cut short at any moment, right? So for you going off that, like, I'm curious, you know, when you said that this inspiration for the mic and, you know, the direction for the podcast, how did you align something you liked with something that you knew could serve people? And how did you get out of, and I actually want to reframe the question. Basically, you know, you said you wanted to start this podcast before, and then you ended up starting the podcast. So obviously there was this barrier that didn't let you start it before. What changed after the fact where you're like, I'm just going to start this podcast regardless. What really changed in your mindset to spark that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, because I think when I'm in college, when I'm thinking about ideas for the podcast, it'd be like, oh, like me and my girls, we can talk. And it's like this fun, which is fine. And I, I listen to those kinds of podcasts all the time. Don't even get me wrong. But I knew when after that whole situation that happened, talk back, which so back is B, spelled B-A-C-C, -C, which is kind of like a slice my name in half. But it was like, like, I'm like, I'm going to speak up now because I think in school I had this narrative of like the quiet, smart girl and that's fine. Like, yeah, I don't really talk well unless I'm being spoken to and yeah, I'm smart, but it's funny because you almost look like I did at least as like, that was like a bad thing. And, and I think it was just, I like that whole reflection of going throughout school, what people used to think of me and then how I viewed myself. It was like, nope, not anymore. And I'm gonna start with the podcast. And when I get out more into the world and people are gonna know me, you'll hear me truly on the show. And it's to uplift everyone else's voice. Like we are talking back together. It's the talk back fam. Cause like you can't do life alone and it's hard. And that's exactly why platforms like mine, like hopefully is can be inspiration to people. Um, and that's that's part of the serving. Like I want to be able to serve people in that way. So I hope, I hope it does. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk back a little bit more. And I think it's awesome what you're doing with your platform. But I want to talk a little bit more about the person you used to be versus the person that you are now and the person you're becoming. And how much of a difference you see in terms of that you mentioned you were kind of like this, um, like more quiet, like schoolgirl who focused a lot on school, you kind of like, you know, went by the books and you focused a lot on that. Not to say that you maybe aren't doing that now. But talk a little bit about some of the personality shifts and really the identity shifts that you've kind of realize that, Hey, I can do this or, Hey, I can do this. I don't have to just be this person. Well, it's, I'm still in the process, but, um, I'm definitely finding my voice now more to speak up and especially being a woman in any like career space. Like that's completely understandable. Like it's hard to break in, especially in male dominated fields. And even podcasting is still, so it's, it's more like, like, I, I was just like, all right, like, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm just going to start speaking up. And, and that was the main shift because I think like so much would happen in my head and I would just keep it there and, but it's not doing anything. And I love writing and journaling and, and that's just as much as it would go to, but I'm like, I think people can benefit from this. So that's where, um, it's just, it's putting it out there, which takes a lot of courage really. And if that confidence does not, it's not like a snap of a finger it's you build it, but action breeds results. So you just start. And I, I figured if I just start doing it, it hopefully will get easier. Um, and it did but when it does, I will tell you guys to just kidding. Don't do it. Don't take any action. But for right now, that's what's working for me. Yeah. 
No, I love that. I think that that idea of kind of like action breeds clarity sort of thing is like action and, you know, clarity breeds confidence type thing. Like, you, you know, you have to start somewhere. Like everybody wants the stars to align perfectly before they start. And that's just not the case. There's no perfect time to start anything, right? Like, not, you know, yeah. one of my early mentors always said imperfect action beats the perfect plan. And you kind of took that in stride and you're just like, no, I'm going to, you know, produce this podcast and kind of, you know, grow and go and go from there, knowing that it's not going to be perfect. Right. But I'm really curious behind, you know, obviously if, if you're listening right now, like there's not a lot of money in podcasting when you're starting up and there's not a lot of, you know, it's a saturated environment. It's a saturated market. A lot of people have podcasts. So, but with that said, it's still such a, a beautiful thing because anybody can podcast. And the fact that you've already made it, you know, five months in your journey, most podcasters only make it three to four episodes. So you're already so far ahead of the curve, but I'm curious, like, what do you equivalent the longevity to in terms of being able to podcast? It seems like you have a great mix of passion and then also a desire for wanting to help people. So what is the formula you've found to keep sticking out the podcast, given that it's a saturated market and given that there's not a lot of money to be made early on? I always remember like everyone's story is unique. I'm unique. Like, and, and that's purpose in itself. So, and I grow every podcast I'm on, like, even like after ours, like today's and, and whenever, like every person I meet, like I grow a little bit more and my perspective shifts and there's so much beauty in that, that it's like exciting for me. And, you know, and even when starting, I'm like, what if this only goes for like a couple months? What if I give up? And those what ifs will kill any dream, like mm. seriously for anyone. So, um, but that's where I guess because it's hard to have passion like 24 seven, like something has to fuel it. But this curiosity of figuring out myself and also being able to like serve other people and, and meeting so many people through it. Like, I think that's what, that's what keeps me fueled and, and excited to keep going with it. Yeah. I really like that. What's been the, the best part about your podcasting journey so far? I mean, being in the infancy of it, given that you're going to take it very, very far and being that you're five months in, what's been the best and most maybe like exciting parts about being a podcaster and being able to have a platform where you can share your voice and you can, you know, spotlight other people's voices to be able to kind of talk back to society. Um, obviously coming on the powerful one podcast, this is the height of it. I don't think it can get better. Let's go. <laughs> um, but, but you realize like we are a lot more similar than with other people than we think we are like the world will divide itself like just and stay divided see that is the difference between powerful one and the world is like people will find a difference and then just stay different but you gotta like come back and bring it back into society and like help others like we we can be an entire huge tribe but like people just gotta want it enough um so i realized like my, maybe like helping and sharing my story, sharing other people's stories, like someone can relate to it and then they can have that positive impact in their life. And I always think of like my younger self and a lot of us should think about our inner child, right? Because you know, all the conditioning, you know it more than anyone, right? And, and the conditioning that we're taught and it's just rewriting those narratives and those stories so we can look at life in a clear perspective. I really love that. Talk more about that aspect because I, I really relate to you on that. Um, you know, part of my mission state for myself is, you know, I want to live like the kid inside of me doing what I love every day. Because when you look at kids, and like, they're just free spirit, and they're always happy, and they're always just doing what they want, when they want, they don't care what people think about them. They have this like free, free will and free spirit. Talk a little bit more about what that means to you to be able to live like the kid inside of you and kind of, you know, embody that that pureness and that wholeness that kids have. Yeah, like, I, I always think of 12 year old Nass and I'm like, is she going to be happy with who you are now? And I think she'd be like really surprised, but would love who I am. She's like, you, you did it. Like you're talking and people are here and you're like, that's crazy. Wow. And those narratives and it's not, not a sob story, but like, you know, the bullying and everything happens in, in middle school and leads into high school. And then the confidence shift, like for me personally, like that's where I don't think like confidence of how I looked, like that was a main thing. I know for women, they, they have that a lot. And one of my episodes I talked about was body neutrality and how your appearance is not equal to your self-worth. But I think a lot of times social media will make us think that it is and, and just in general and people. And it's like, why? And especially if you went through any bullying phase for how you looked or anything like, yeah, I'm rocking the glasses. I will never take them off. I refuse to wear contacts and <laughs> you know, the braces and all that. But it's like, and it, it did take a hit to the confidence. So it was like rebuilding all of that um, 
past high school and into college and out of college. And then when I had that whole like hospital thing, you're like, like that was, it's like all of that started coming back. And it was like, wait, I have been living someone else's life. It doesn't have to be like this. That's years ago. Mm. Um, I'll still take care of 12 year old ass. Like, don't worry, just come with me on this journey, but like, trust me. And it's almost like just learning to trust myself that like, I know what I'm doing and I have good pure intentions, which is so important. Like, I don't think any of us can do anything in life that's impactful if we don't have the purest of intentions. So and when, before you start something, like you make your intention and, and then you just go for it. I love that. I love that. I mean, that that's one thing, like, I think, you know, when you have intention and you have an action that can line up with that intention, that's where power and clarity can come in when you have a, a goal, when you have a desired outcome and intention is a desired outcome for what you want to happen. And if you have an action, that's going to align with that intention. It's so powerful. And I love, I love that you said that. And you know, I'm really curious, like you, you mentioned kind of like social media and the glorification of certain things and, and societal kind of norms and expectations in terms of real confidence and true confidence in the way that you've started to embody it in the way that you've started to find it versus what you versus what it's glorified as online versus all this external stuff. What's something you really like talking back to in terms of being able to build confidence versus the portrayal of confidence now in social media, whatever else? Um, you know, don't get me wrong. Like I love makeup tutorials and outfit, like all the, the TikToks of all the, like I I'll watch those for hours. And, um, but I think there's like so much weight on it, especially for women, like, they see it and like women look airbrushed and they're beautiful. Like, don't even get me wrong, but in our minds, like we're just constantly comparing ourselves to that. At least I am. And then it's like, I'll, there's always something to improve. Like I should always fix something. And it's just about the outward appearance. Like that's, and there's so much more to people, like no matter what you look like or anything, like you are a human soul and no one can see our actual soul, but you have to portray that. And no matter how much eyeliner or lipstick or whatever you're wearing, hairspray, gel, like it's not going to show who you truly are inside. Mm. So it's, that's like the biggest thing on, on socials to talk back to is like, dude, just look however you're going to look, but that's when we speak up and you talk back and you use your voice, like people will see farther than, than just the outward appearance. I really love that. that. That's really good. Like how, how can people listening right now, let's say somebody is in a similar spot with you, right? Like I know we've talked about awareness before I'm big on awareness. Let's say somebody does have a deep inflection point and they have this awareness and they realize that the life they've been living to this point is maybe not the life they want to live. What's a good next step for that person to be able to you know, start to become the person they want to be or start to do the things they want to do or have the things they want to have. Like once people get that awareness, like what, what direction do you think is a really positive direction to go in next? Like how do they find that thing or how do they find themselves um, and, and, and that sort of thing? I think first you can always lean into if anyone ever told you what something that you did was weird, like go hard into that and think about, all right, they said this thing was weird, but why did I like it so much? Anything that made you smile, like that's your thing, man. Like you just got to go after it and, and love that. Um, and another thing is like, you know, obviously podcasts, um, but educating yourself through books, especially like, um, I remember one of my teachers in high school recommended the outliers book by Malcolm Gladwell. And I'm now reading blink by him too. Like just opening your mind to there are like-minded people and you realize like you, you we feel so alone when we want to be ourselves. but there's actually a lot of people who are like pushing for authenticity and individuality so you just gotta like do some searching and enjoy the process while you're at it but um it's educating yourself and leaning into things that you truly truly love yeah I really like that it's almost like I like the idea of kind of taking inventory on everything, like taking inventory on, you know, yourself in the past. Like, what did you used to enjoy taking inventory? You know, something you said there is like the people around you. So I want to get into that, like in terms of taking inventory on the people around you, how did you personally kind of judge that? Cause we, we do know that like our relationships and our alignments create our assignments. Like the people that you are around are going to create ultimately who you become. And so how have you put yourself in positions as you've kind of taken inventory and realized you've wanted something different what are, what are the alignments in the relationships that you've been able to build to kind of help you, you know, do the path you want to do and, and kind of be the person you want to be? Well, it's funny because so after college, um, so that was like May 2019, and then not a year out, there's the pandemic. And I think a lot of people were sitting with their own thoughts. Like we were kind of all forced into that, but like some people are going to lean into it more than others. And um, 
you know, as, as friends, cause like we all come from everywhere and go to college and then when everyone spreads out, like it already started getting a little quiet in my own head because like friends were so far. So it's not noise, but like, if you want to call it noise, it's just, you're, you're just, you have to like, you have to quiet down. Like you have to get into a space where you're not really listening to, to people. And even if it's your friends, like take that time for yourself and just really get into your thoughts. Um, and I'm like super big on journaling. Like I know when, when I tell people to journal, they think of like a pink diary and it's like, no, relax. Like it can be anything. It's a pen and paper. Go get like the feather pens that like Shakespeare used to use. I don't know. Like just, <laughs> and just write down what you think and, and bring that out into the physical world. And I think you just really are able to get in touch with yourself when you can see your own thoughts. And I know teachers like always say to write down notes. So it has to work for us when we're trying to reflect. Right. <laughs> That's so good. Talk about what journaling looks like for you. Because when I began my journaling journey, I was so intimidated because I didn't know where to start. Um, And I know that that the writing and speaking is stuff that you enjoy doing. So I want you to talk a little bit more about journaling. But, you know, coming from somebody who is maybe speaking toward me, and I think the cool part about this podcast is we are almost being, um, you know, people who can be for the person we were a couple years ago, right? So in your beginning of your journaling practice and, and to where you're at now in your journaling, what does that journaling look like for you? Because I know that it can be a very intimidating thing to be like, oh, how do I start? When I don't think I have anyone who will hear me right now, not because like they don't want to or like no one has the time because, you know, it, it's demanding to to be like there for people. Um, but I just anything that was just bothering me, if it hurt, especially like that's getting written down if it felt really good, that's going to get written down too. like height, those heightened emotions. I think you just got to get them out from your head. Um, and I, and I did a podcast episode about processing your emotions because I don't think we process them enough when you're really happy. Like think, why am I really happy? Who's making me really happy? Who do I tell when I'm really happy? And when you're really bummed out and something sucks, like, are you hurt, like betrayed, like who did this and where were you when it happened? And then when you're able to kind of track these, like where journaling starts, then you can see patterns maybe like, and be like, okay, like, obviously if I'm around this person, I'm not feeling this, this type of way. Um, and, and it's, it's really, it's for yourself. So journaling just starts like with doing, like you just got to start, but like pick an emotion and like, just pick a time and just, and just write. I really liked when this happened. I hated when this happened is I don't need a whole book, you know, just like write a sentence. <laughs> That's really good. I think that's a really awesome place to start. And it's, it's very unique. Like, I, I think that that's an answer that I'll kind of do to more people, like maybe take a thought or an emotion that you're feeling and kind of like, put it to paper and say, you know, where is this coming from? What do I feel in this in this state? Because I think the problem is, you know, we have thoughts, and we think the same thoughts. So, you know, 90% of our thoughts today are the same as they were yesterday. And so basically what happens is if you don't change your thoughts, you're going to live the same life that you've always lived. And if that's not a life that you want, you're going to live a life that ultimately is not fulfilling and not happy. So I think the act of saying things out loud, the act of writing things on paper, you're tapping out of the subconscious and you're tapping into the conscious. So that way you can be the person you're like, Oh no, this is how I feel. Like the act of writing and the act of speaking is such a powerful thing because the subconscious is like, it's like, I say this example, but it's like a fish out of water. It can't survive. Well, if you're, if you're coming from a place of, you know, intentional writing or intentional speaking and stuff like that. So I really do like that advice. I think journaling is, is a huge thing. Um, what's another habit that you've formed, you know, similar to journaling that's really helped you on the track of the person you want to become and the person that you are now, is there another habit that you've instilled in your life that you didn't have before this, uh, this kind of grim reaper moment (laughs) before the grim reaper gave me the mics. Um, I didn't really, I I love drives. I think a lot of people like they underestimate. Yeah. It'll take some gas money, but like, you know, budget for your self care. Right. (laughs) Um, but I, I love just driving around and I, I have no idea where I'm going. GPS is off. And you can either have music, not have music, but you just, you just go. And it's funny because it's instead of like, and like meditating and, and prayers and all of that, like that's super important. And like, I think you should add on to that. But like, if you wanted something a little like with a nasty twist to it, it's like, yo, I put on some bangers and it's like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm just, I'm just driving around and just seeing like, it's, it's almost like shower thoughts. Like, I don't know. You never know. Like you can just do something just kind of normal, but like, as long as you just do it and, and you're just quiet, you're just by yourself. Again, it's just like getting in your own thoughts. So 
um especially around the holiday time when everyone's putting up their lights and stuff and even like halloween like i just love seeing that stuff i'll just drive around and and be like oh like that's dope <laughs> like I, I like that stuff i like that a lot i think it just goes to the point like there's stuff that's gonna work for some people it's not gonna work for other people and like tap into that stuff that works for you if you're a person who likes you know um going on a quiet car drive instead of going on a quiet walk like you know I think it's just so cool that you can kind of capitalize on the stuff that really works well for you as an individual. So I love that you're adding those habits. So what excites you the most about this person that you're becoming and your podcast journey? Like what is the most exciting thing about where you're at in life right now that gets you just energized and, and motivated every day? I think I'm realizing that I'm capable of so much more than I gave myself credit for. And I, you listen to the, the boxes that people tried to put me in like before and and because I've had, I've even had like employers before tell me like I was too confident for my age. That rings in my head so much, almost every day. Like I'll think about it before podcasting, before anything. And I'm like, yeah, I'm confident for my age and it's not a bad thing. And that's an insecurity you have and you're projecting it. And I feel sorry that you are going to project as other people. And it's just the, the mind shifts that I start having. And like, I'm so excited to just like, see where I'm going with it and enjoy the journey every day. So, um, so yeah, that's, I I'm, it's just exciting. <laughs> that's really exciting. It's, it's so funny that you said that because there's always this stuff that people want to try to put us into a box. And, and this goes to talk back. This goes to a powerful one is breaking out of that conformity. Like going against that grain and being able to, to determine things for yourself. I get this all the time. Oh, you're doing so well for your age. It's like, no, I'm, I'm doing well. I exactly. forget my age. I'm doing well. Don't put me in a box of like, Oh, you shouldn't be doing this good because of your age, the same way for you. It's like, you shouldn't be this confident because of your age. And so I love that you're talking back on that by embodying and exuding the confidence to be able to know, like, I'm going to do this, you know, regardless. So I, I love, I love that. I love that so much. Yeah, man. Like even in going back to journaling, like I wrote down that stuff, like the, the really messed up things that people have said to me, like I'll put it on paper and I'll look at it and be like, yo, this is crazy. Like people actually saying this, but then you really get to visualize it. And that's how you're battling like your subconscious and your conscious because like, and that's how change will happen. Because once you start taking note, because you can think of a thought and you won't think about it again, but like, you won't know that you thought about it. And so like writing it down will just, it brings it out into that conscious mind and, um, and yeah, it'll just breathe change. Oh, it's so good. No, I love that. What is, um, what is something as that you've taken in your, in your 23 years that you've really just stuck to as like a, a rule, just something that you can give to the listeners to wrap up this podcast as something that really has stuck with you throughout your journey and throughout your life. What would that one piece of life advice be? you are always kind, always be kind. I, that is in like the, the whole intro for the show is like, we are talking back with a crazy amount of kindness. People are different. They come from all walks of life. And, but the thing is like, I, I made the joke in the last episode. And I was like, well, if you're not a bot, then we actually have a lot more in common than you might think. So <laughs> just enjoy people's stories. Like some people come off a little like rough around the edges as people want to say, but like, it's fine. We all are, we all have those edges, but it's just like bringing your walls down and then people will bring their walls down too. So just be nice and be kind to everyone because everyone deserves that much. I love that. Where can people find you? Where can they find your podcast and what can they expect if they listen to your podcast? Yeah, man. Um, I'm going to make a lot of lame jokes. So if you're into that, you definitely check it out. Um, talk back. Uh, the Instagram page is T-A-L-K-B-A-C-C -C on Instagram. Um, and my personal is N-A-S underscore B-A-C-C -C on Instagram as well. You can just, just uh, link up on Instagram. I'm there all the time. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much for having me, man. Like, this is great. I think we're just so aligned with our shows. Like, I, I love that we got to collab. Yeah, no, I love it. And, and alignment's my word of the year, like creating the right alignment. So I just want to thank you, Naz, for being on here, for being powerful and for sharing your power. So guys, go check Naz out. She's doing very amazing things. Not for her age. She's doing amazing things, period. So thank you so much for being here, guys. Go make sure to uh, to share this with somebody to um, to spread some power, spread some kindness, and spread some positive vibes, not germs. I'm not stealing germs. her catchphrase. <laughs> Powerful One Podcast, out. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end. I really appreciate your support, not only for me, not only for Powerful One, but also all the guests on this on this uh, 
platform and just tuning in and being inspired and, and stay being powerful, man. So, you know, thank you again if you watch this and, you know, excited for the future. Excited. It's been a great year for Powerful One. Excited for everything I have coming in the future, everything with the brand, everything with my personal brand and just everything in general. So I just want to thank you guys again and be sure to, you know, share this if, if it inspired you, if it felt powerful, if you connected with it, share it with your friends, share the platform. Um, please go, if you don't mind, go subscribe on YouTube, go write a review on iTunes. All that stuff really means a lot. Thank you guys again and be sure to stay tuned because every week we are coming out with a new podcast episode. Stay locked into the page, guys. Thank you. Stay powerful.